Direct variation equations are in the form y equals k times x. k is a constant. Some books will say y equals a times x, okay, where a is a constant. Inverse variation equations are in the form y equals k divided by x. Notice the x is in the denominator. Here, x is in the numerator. Again, k is just a constant. When you go to graph direct variation equations, the graph will go right through the origin. It's a straight line, okay, and it's gonna go up to the right with a positive slope if k, or the constant, is positive. It's gonna go down to the right with a negative slope if k is negative. Now, let's look at the inverse variation ones. So the inverse variation ones, they form this hyperbola shape where it's approaching the x-axis and it's approaching the y-axis. It gets closer and closer. But if k is positive, you're gonna notice that the two branches are in the first and third quadrants. If k is negative, it's gonna reflect over the x-axis so that you're gonna be here in the second and fourth quadrants. Okay, so you can see that the graphs are uh, distinctly different, right? But now what I wanna show you, I wanna kinda of switch gears here a little bit. If you solve for k, meaning you solve for the constant, by dividing both sides by x here, you're gonna see that k, the constant, equals y divided by x. Okay, so if you take the y coordinate on the graph, right, and divide it by the x coordinate, you're always gonna get that same constant. Okay, that's important. We'll talk about that in a minute. But with inverse variation equations, you can see if we solve for the constant by multiplying both sides by x to clear the denominator here, k is gonna equal y times x or x times y, meaning that if you take the x and y coordinates and you multiply them together, no matter which coordinates that you use on that graph, you're always gonna get that same constant k. So these are the differences between direct and inverse. Let's get into some examples. So say they give you this equation here, 4x minus 2 equals y. Is that direct or is it inverse? Well, what I recommend you do is just try to isolate the y. Get the y by itself. So y equals 4x minus 2. So what do you think? Is it direct or inverse? Well, if it wasn't for this negative 2, if it was just y equals 4x, it would be direct. You see how it's in this form here? and k would be four, that's the constant of variation. But because the negative two is there, this is actually gonna be neither, neither direct or inverse, okay? Let's go to number two. When you look at this one, what do you think? Direct or inverse? Well, if you solve for y by multiplying by 12 over one, see those are gonna cancel, you're gonna get y equals 12x. You can see it's in the direct variation format, the k, the constant is 12, the constant of variation. Okay, number three, so we'll write direct here for this one, direct. Okay, number three, again, we wanna to try to solve for y. So to get the y by itself, let's divide both sides by four x, okay? Eight divided by four, if we reduce that, we get two divided by x. So we have y equals two divided by x. You can see that this is in the inverse variation format, just like this one over here, y equals k times x. And k, the constant of variation, is gonna be positive two. So this one's inverse, I'll put i. Now, another format that they'll sometimes present this to you in is in a table, okay, like we have here, like an XY table. So they give us some coordinates and they say, okay, is this a representing direct variation or is it inverse variation? Well, let's take a look. So I'll say this first one here. So at first glance, it doesn't look like a whole lot, right? But if we go back to what we were talking about here about solving for the constant of variation, let's see, if we divide the Y coordinate by the X coordinate, do we get the same value? or if we multiply the y value and the x value uh, together, do we get the same constant? Let's double check. So what I'm gonna do here, let's multiply these together. So we multiply these together, we get 12, three, three, and 30. We're not getting the same constant. That tells us it's not inverse. Let's try dividing this time. Negative six divided by negative two is three. Negative three divided by negative one is three. Three divided by one is three. And 30 divided by 10 is three. So I just did the y divided by x equals three. And so you can see that y equals 3x is our direct variation equation. So because we divided the y by x, we got the same constant that tells us it's direct and our constant of variation is three. Okay, so you're with me so far? We'll do two more examples. So this one, let's say we divide y divided by x. So 12 divided by one is 12. Three divided by four is 0.75. Uh-oh, they're not the same. So we can see this one's not gonna be direct variation. Let's try multiplying the x and y values together. 1 times 12 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 1 is 12. Okay, it looks like we're getting 12 each time. So this is inverse variation. y equals 12 divided by x. 
Okay, one more example, but I just want to point out something that gets students a little bit confused. When you look at this, you say y equals k times x. It looks like we're multiplying. Why are we dividing here? Well, again, what we did is we solved for k. So when we get k by itself, y divided by x equals k. Whereas over here, it looks like we're dividing, right? The variables in the denominator. But what I did is I multiplied both sides by x to get the k by itself. So now you can say, see that k equals y times x. So it's kind of like the opposite. Like if you're solving and it looks like you're dividing here, you're actually multiplying. And if you're multiplying, you're actually dividing. But that's because we wanted to get the k by itself, the constant. So what do you think we should do on this last problem? Should we divide or should we multiply? Well, you can check both. Let's do, uh, let's do dividing. So negative 32 divided by 8 is negative 4. Negative 16 divided by 4 is negative 4. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Okay, looks like we're getting negative 4 each time when we divide. So that tells us it's direct variation. So it's y equals negative 4 times x. Now, if you want to check your work, Go ahead and pick some points. Let's say we put one in for x, negative four times one. Yep, negative four, it checks out. How about this one? If we put eight in, negative four times eight, negative 32, checks out. So you can do a quick spot check to make sure you're on the right track. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I hope they're helping you in your math class. I hope they're helping you to understand better and get better grades. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in some of the future videos and go ahead and check out some of my past videos. I'll talk to you soon.